Hi, um, I'm Lou. I'm John. Welcome to our little mini series, um, Bottled Wisdom. Uh, mm -hmm. This is us in our uh, uh, kind of kitchen in the uh, UK, mm -hmm. uh, just taking these different statements and just talking about kind of what they mean and how we can apply them. Yeah. Uh, this one I think is really important. It says, uh, lying and drinking usually go hand in hand. Your partner may be very truthful in all other areas. Similarly, if your trust is broken in one area, try not to let the mistrust contaminate all other areas. Mm -hmm. Don't give the drunk or the drinking that much power. Yeah. This is one that very often people talk to us about, you know. Um, in fact, I've heard them, a saying we often hear is, the drinking bothers me, but the lying makes me really angry, mm. you know. Um, and why do they lie so much, you know? And, and there's a very simple answer to that one. They're defending the drink. <coughs> I, I spoke briefly in one of the previous videos, I, I said about, you know, alcohol was uh, the drinker's friend, it's their medication, it's um, how they coped with the world, you know, and if you are in any way uh, threatening that, you know, threatening the removal of it, then they become very defensive, and part of the defence mechanisms is to lie, you know, you've been drinking, oh no I haven't. Oh, yes, you have. And then this pantomime starts. Or, I only had one drink, dear. You know, and then crawling in the door, obviously legless. You know, you've only had one drink. You know, what was it? A barrel. You know, it, it's the lies are very often stupid. Mm. You know, they're an ins insult to your intelligence. But, and, you know, and sitting here as an ex drunk, I know because I have done them all. Mm. And I expected people to believe them. And I used to plead, and I've heard this often, and I think other people say it in other sort of compulsions, yeah. you know, that if they just said what was going on, because you, you get in this horrible world uh, where somebody's lying about the truth, then you yeah. feel as if you're going crazy. Yeah. And you do feel that when you're living with a drinker. You feel as if you're going crazy. And so you feel you want to say to them, you know, even if you're drinking, just tell me you're drinking. Mm -hmm. um, but they seem to go hand in hand. Denial and drink uh, seem to be what addiction's all about. And you'll hear this over and over yeah. again. And you can't logic or reason your drinker to stop doing it. Yeah, I mean, years yeah. ago, you know, um, Freud, um, the psychologist, um, talked about all these defense mechanisms and lying and denial were two of them. And uh, people who worked in the area of addiction pounced on these two because they found it very common in drinkers. Well, any addicts at all. You know, and it's continued to be something. In fact, there was a whole um, treatment set up called Synanon who used to try and break down uh, the denial by shouting at people all the time. It didn't work. Synanon no longer exists. So that, that kind of tells you, does it work? No. Now, a real caution here, what it tends to do, you know, and I do this statement in, you know, when I work with lots of clients, mm -hmm. not necessarily with drink issues. Yep. Um, they've done something, their partner said, I will never trust them again. And yep. I think what you need to do, and this is really important, is don't give the drink more power than it has got already. Mm. Uh, my husband actually was a very honest man mm. until he drank. And this was saying, AA, hey, doesn't it? How do you know a, lump, a drink is... Um, lying. lying, his lips are moving. Yeah, so yeah. when drink enters the arena, then lies tend to come straight in with it. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean to say that they are a dishonest person in other areas. And so keep that other bit safe. Keep the trustworthiness mm. yeah. that your husband or your wife has, uh, has earned, or child or mum. Um, that you know, if they've earned a trustworthiness mm. and it's still there, keep that intact. Otherwise, yeah. the drink is smashing up things that it's not even relevant with. Um, now, I, I've lived with a drinker for 29 years, not this one, but yeah. uh, he died of cancer, Definitely my husband. Um, and and I, so I know um, when they let you down, it is awful. And so again, I'm not saying, you know, you just be easy going about your trust. It's shattering, absolutely shattering. But what you must make sure is that you don't then by mistake, step on some of those pieces and make them even more shattered. Yeah. So, you know, I think um, stop saying, please just tell me, because you'll find if there's a compulsion going on, the lie is probably there. That's yeah. part, they, they are in partnership with each other. Mm -hmm. But 
keep the other trustworthiness yeah. in your relationship alive and well. Try and keep it as best as you can because uh, the trust and respect are two casualties of yeah. um, drinking. Yeah. And it's very difficult to put them back together again. Which, once they're lost, it's difficult to get them back to. Yeah, and you know? I, that we're going to be talking, uh, we'll do the next one, I yeah. think, is, is kind of about respect and courtesy as well. Yeah. So listen to that one as well. Yeah. Again, the feelings are really normal and natural, and nowhere we're discounting what you're going through or what you feel. But what we're trying to help you do is to handle those feelings in mm. a way that will help change and not hinder it. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so thanks for listening. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.